Hello and welcome to JTrain Studios. Today we're going to be designing three sirens and in case you want to make them yourselves, I'm going to show you how I did them. I have three sirens I'm going to design today so I need to have the ideas for them all. The first one's going to be a T128 which I mount up on my train set. The second one is going to be a P15 which I'm going to have in the siren graveyard on my train set. And the third one is hopefully going to be a 2001 siren, which is going to go on my grandpa's train set. Let's get right into it and start designing. With all that work, here's what the model turned out like. It'll work pretty well, and at its small scale, it's as detailed as it gets. I made sure the size was right, and just by luck, it was perfect. I flipped it over on its side in preparation for 3D printing, and got it ready. I decided I should use the optimized speed so that it would turn out as good as it could, and I forgot the SD card. Now that I've got the SD card, I can print it. I'll take this time to tell you that in case you're making a siren of your own, the 3D printing software I'm using is called Tinkercad. You might use this in school, during high school, or maybe even middle school. It's very useful because you can make anything very quickly and easily, and it's straightforward. It's free to sign up for, too. You can just use your school account to sign up for it. And no, this is not sponsored. It's just useful. Isn't it funny how it doesn't sound like a sponsor if I talk about the clay? Well, it is easy to use. It's pretty cheap, I guess. I mean, you can make pretty good models. But, uh, uh, I guess it's just the setting and the lack of branding that make this clay not really seem like a sponsor. So anyway, I got to 3D printing. And uh, pretty early in, I noticed that it was way too big. In fact, it was twice as big as I needed it to be. So I decided to just keep that, use it for something else. In scale, it's the same size as a P50. So off camera, I redesigned it and started again. This time it was actually a little smaller than I wanted, but it was just fine, so I'd use it anyway. A quick search in the junkyard found me this nice little pole. And by coincidence, it was the exact same size as a drill bit. So I drilled the hole and fit the siren on. Not that it's actually going to need the pole, because it's just going to be laying in the scrapyard beside the electric company. However, the pole makes it look like it was once installed, and it looks nice anyway. Here's what it looked like on the pole. I was trying to decide if I wanted to paint it, but I decided to leave it. I placed it in the scrapyard, and with that, that's one of our sirens done. On to the next two. Because I have a hurricane in this corner and a wellin in this corner, I want to make sure that I put the T128 right here, specifically in this hole right here. The hole that this was originally for was for, uh, wait a second, okay, this siren. Remember that clay that didn't sound like a sponsor? Well, I want to do something weird with this siren. I want to make it out of clay. A T128 has these distinctive curves in its horn and eight of them specifically for the eight parts. I hope to remake that with this tool I have. I can already tell this is gonna go terribly. Okay, I guess I'll make a separate piece for the back and the horn and then I'll kind of attach them together. It's like a square with rounded edges. Uh, only on some of the edges, though. I guess I can use this table to help get those. It's not quite as bad as I thought. I mean, aside from the fact that it's terrible. Why does it look like that? I mean, if you showed this to somebody, they'd probably identify it correctly after you showed it to them 300 other times and told them what it was. 
I don't know why I didn't just 3D print this. How do I even make that horn shape? I ended up making this shape. It's kind of accurate, but I don't know what to really say about it. I gotta cut it, but I lost my X-Acto knife. I don't know what happened to that, so... I just gotta somehow cut it with these scissors that are bent. <laughs> okay, that actually worked. That's good. It's a good sign, probably. Probably. That doesn't mean guaranteed. Alright, well, it's kind of identifiable. That's a good thing. I just lost the back. That's less good. I'm gonna try putting a piece of toothpick in to kind of hold it together. Oh, I just messed up the shape. And, oh, uh, oh boy. Um, well, it's, uh, it's made of the right material. Here it is in a very shaky context. Um, it's, it's not amazing, but you'd at least recognize it as any siren. Maybe it'll look better with paint, but that's a problem for future me, and I'm tired right now. Well, this is future me, and I'm all done painting. It does look a lot better before, and I put this white screen on the front, but it's not perfect. It still looks like a P10 or P15 from the sides, and from the front, well, it looks good on video, but trust me, it's not this good in person. Despite this, I installed it. It actually looked a lot better than I expected. It's definitely not perfect, but it looks pretty nice. It is loose, and it could rotate, but it can't because I don't have any gearbox or anything in place to actually allow it to. If I did have a motor to allow it to rotate, I'd probably use that on a larger scale siren first. Let's reflect on all the ways that we've made sirens so far. So far, the two methods we've used is forming out of clay and 3D printing. But what about the third siren? Okay, this is going to make you mad, but I'm 3D printing it. But yes, there is a third method, so why am I not using it? Well, it's based on luck. You see, I have this junkyard, and the way this new method works is that you just take a random piece that looks like your siren and make a siren out of it. Yeah, it's that simple. So the reason I'm not making the 2001 out of this method is because I just don't have a piece that is close enough to the siren. Although I do have an example for you to see. The Starly Champion is just an extra piece that I had handy. I painted it yellow. So anyways, let's get on with our third siren. I'm more that there are many types of 2001 sirens, but I just went with the general one. I modeled it after a picture, but I don't really know which type it was. I think the thing that will tie it together in the end is when I add the FS logo on the front. I plan to paint this on by hand, but I want to make it very detailed and accurate. I'm very happy I was able to add these grooves on the back, but they probably won't show with the 3D printing. Luckily, this time I remembered the SD card. I got it ready for printing, and decided that I don't want to bore you by another time lapse. And wow, I'm impressed by the final product. Even those little grooves on the back for the different ports showed up in this final product. It's hard to see here, but they really did. And despite a tiny shift in the top, you won't really notice that in the end product. I started assembling it, and I was very excited. I grabbed some pieces from the scrapyard, so yes, I actually did use the final method of making sirens. It kind of made me jealous that I had this clay siren on my train set, and I was sending this amazing 2001 to a different train set that I will rarely see. For this update, I can show you that I have the rotator box installed. It's a bit loose, but it's going pretty well. 
I got the siren painted, and I got this control box on its painted pole. I even have this little mounting plate on the top, and I've got a cord coming down to the control box. Well, I just finished it, and it looks incredible. All the good details were kept, including the rotator box and all the mechanisms. I even have this wire going down to the pole. I'm excited to install this, and I think it'll be a really fun touch for anyone looking at the train set. Now that I have a chance to go to his house, I'm installing it. It's pretty simple to install. You just drill the hole, then put glue in, and stick it in. The pole is just made of a wooden skewer that's painted brown, and it's pretty close to the drill bit size, so you can easily slide it in there. And that's all you gotta do. It'll stand itself up. And just like that, it's done! We have all three of our sirens made, and now you know how to make them too! Thank you for watching! I'm considering selling these and other siren designs on Etsy or something like that, so keep an eye out for these. I'm not sure if I will though. Once again, this has been J Train Studios, and thank you for watching.